Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm one of the writers who are developing materials for Happy Valley. Has anybody ever used Happy Valley uh, student books in your school? Oh, yeah, I use them. Well, I didn't write those, but I, <laughs> but I was an early adopter of the series a, few, uh, a number of years ago, and I've been a really big fan of Happy Valley because the, the kids really, really love these books. They, they know how to use them, they're really speaking, and the parents know how to use them. And, and I, I, it's really transformed my experience with the young kids' classes. I love the music. And so they approached me because I've been kind of a raving fan of theirs, and they asked me if I'd like to write for their phonics series, which I also use at my school. The kids really love sticking stickers on and, and uh, uh, working with the letters and uh, I find them really easy to use. Uh, I'm going to be talking about today about my book, the first one I've ever written that is coming out at the end of this month. And it is written for first year primary school students. And it's, um, I have a reading program at my school and uh, I, we have an extensive reading library and we teach a synthetic phonics program. And synthetic phonics is basically um, where you teach the sounds through and uh, sound discrimination and phonological awareness through teaching kids very clear articulation. Can we close the door? It's kind of noisy. And um, anyway, um, this is a synthetic phonics book, but you'll be surprised that there's a lot more going on because. The phonics book level three teaches three letter words, how to uh, say the sounds of the letters and how to blend them into words. And this book does not go beyond that. It's the next level, so why didn't I just begin to teach longer words, more complicated words? Well, I don't think children learn in a linear manner. I think children learn like the waves of the ocean coming up on the shore. They go forward and they come back and they gather and they go forward. And each time they go forward, they fill in gaps and they go a little bit further. And at any given time in your classroom with young children, you feel like you're not making any progress. The waves just keep coming up to the same level at the beach, right? But after a while, you realize, oh my God, the tides come in because it does happen. And what kids need is filling in gaps and they need recycling, and they need to go deeper. So this book is all about going deeper. And the way we're going deeper is, first of all, in synthetic phonics, we believe that children should be able to speak language with clear comprehension before they ever see that language in print. They need to understand that print before they are decoding it so that they can get the emotional reward of information from getting that uh, information from the print reading process. So this is all about going back to comprehension as a main uh, skill that we're gonna be working here. And we do this through uh, something that I call graded immersion, which is inspired from the extensive reading movement. I don't know how many of you are have been following that, but um, it dumps an entire level of very specifically graded language on students from the very beginning. It dumps it on them. And then it uses that language in many contexts over the course of an entire year so that students develop an intuitive understanding of the meaning of the language. And this is really important because we are systematically developing all the tools they'll need to be able to jump off and read more complex things in the next level, which we are also coming out with. So um, what we do here first is young kids can't use extensive reading, they can't read yet. So we're doing extensive listening and we're doing something that's called extensive speaking. There are 22 grammatically graded songs in the book that recycles language. You get eight extensive listening stories and then the songs are designed so that when the kids sing them and dance them, they are telling the story again. So they're getting this very, they're, they're interacting with the book in many ways. And I gotta show you two units of this book. 
so that you can see how this works because you've never seen anything like this before. Um, the first unit of the, there are eight units of the book and the first page of every unit has a picture with a lot of detail in it. And you need all that detail because this is the language that's gonna come up in the extensive listening. And it's going to introduce the phonanimal characters, which will introduce the, the sounds of the letters that we're going to be focusing on in this level, in this unit. There are two units that this, these letters will be uh, focused on. And there are also two songs on every beginning page of, of the unit so that you're gonna be listening and then you're gonna be singing and pointing to the story, and then you can sing and dance to the story. So this is the beginning of a phonics book, and I'm pretty sure you've never seen so much language input in a phonics book before. So let's just see how that works. We're gonna to listen to the first listening now and see how that goes. Welcome to Happy Valley. My name's Zoe, and these are my friends. Can you see Callie Cat? She's under the umbrella. What's she doing? She's eating fish. How are you, Callie Cat? I'm cold. I don't like rain. Brr. Callie's cold because it's raining. Allie Ant's sad. He doesn't like rain either. He likes sunny weather. I'm cold. There's Golly Goat. Can you see him? He's in an orange jacket. What's he doing? He's drinking juice. How are you, Golly Goat? Man, I'm hot. And I'm thirsty. Golly Goat doesn't like hot, sunny weather. Look at Dilly Dog. He's in the truck under the apple tree. What's he doing? He's throwing apples up into the tree. How are you, Dilly Dog? I'm angry. It's very windy, and I can't get those apples. I don't like windy weather. Grrr. Dilly's angry because he can't get the apples. Tommy Tiger's angry too. What's the matter, Tommy Tiger? I can't fly my airplane. I don't like windy weather. Can you see Sissy Snake? How's the weather, Sissy? It's snowing. Brr. I don't like snow. I'm cold. Uncle Umpire isn't cold. He's sleeping in the sun. And who's swimming in the sea? It's Ollie Octopus. How are you, Ollie? I'm happy. I like swimming. How about you? Are you happy? Do you like swimming? Okay, just to say, this is a demo of the CD, and uh, actually Dilly Dog in the final version uh, is angry because he can't get his airplane. It said, I'm angry because I can't get my apple. That was an edit. We haven't gotten that done yet. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so now we got we to put it together with songs, okay? Because now what do you do with all this language? It's a lot of language for a first grade class, but believe it or not, the book has only 148 words in it. Everything is done in 148 words. Hard to believe, right? It's doable. So here we're going to start with a song, and I'd like you to sing it with me. Stand up! Let's have some fun! <laughs>
and prepositions, and we're going to be singing one more song. What's your name? I'm Allie and how are you? I'm Sam. How's the weather? It's raining. I don't like rain. In the sun, I can run. I can catch a ball. I like sunny weather. I don't like rain. What's your name? I'm Sissy Snake. How are you? I'm cold. How's the weather? It's snowing. I don't like snow. In the sun, I can run. I can catch a ball. I like sunny weather. I don't like snow. What's your name? I'm Tommy Tiger. How are you? I'm angry. How's the weather? It's windy. I don't like wind. In the sun, I can run. I can catch a ball. I like sunny weather. I don't like wind. Okay, everybody. Thank you for your participation. You may sit down now. So we're, we're, we're hearing a story. We can act out the story as we're listening to it. We can sing the story. We can act it out this way. It's all on an audio CD that's in the back of every book. 74 tracks. So lots of input for your students. But here's the phonics. Guess what? We're teaching, it's a phonics book, so we're gonna be teaching you how to read. But the first thing we have to do is learn our letters, and we have to learn the names of the phonanimals. And one thing that you might notice is there's a little red dot at the starting point of every letter, especially the letter D, which if you don't start at the right place, you're going to get confused about whether it's a D or a B. -b, -b. So it's really important to get your kids to start at the correct place with their pencils when they're writing. And the line support shows the balance that they need in the writing, and that's important too. But what we do with kids when they first come into the classroom is they have to say the names of the animals, and we have a chant for every page. There, there are two chants on this page for all this vocabulary, because they need to be able to learn this vocabulary, right? And I don't like flashcards. They're available for games and things to download from the website, but um, you don't need them if, if you, you know, they can point chance. It's, it's good. I like easy. Uh, so anyway, so what I like to do after going through and naming the characters is I like to turn on the chant and get the kids to write in the air with their fingers. That's the beginning before I have them actually use a pencil. So I want to kind of work with that and show you how that's done. Here, there's a big area where there are boxes with pictures. 
And this is part of the synthetic phonics experience. All these pictures have words in it that have similar sounding um, words, the beginning sounds of the words. For example, drum, juice, and dad. Um, that's really hard for kids to choose which two uh, beginning sounds go are alike. They often think that drum and juice have the same beginning sound. So all of these pictures are designed to confuse kids. <laughs> really, because that is a teaching opportunity, everyone. When you see kids who aren't sure about the which sounds they're hearing, you go and you articulate and get them to copy you and you get them to hear the sounds and make them more, raise their awareness of the sounds. And this, first of all, the best thing they can do is do an activity like this after they can already say all these words. But it's a lot of vocabulary for the, you know, first week of class or whatever. And so there's a chance and you might support them in the beginning by helping them, but the ideal with synthetic phonics is that they can name all these and do it themselves and demonstrate they can. But we're gonna have a chant here and listen to similar sounds and see if your students have similar Dad, sounds. drum, juice, cut, goat, black, Under apple tag dog dot cat cold gum album up alligator sub three sad on octopus umpire. Okay, so what you're doing is you're having them draw lines here, and this is a really effective way of teaching sound discrimination, and uh, I've been using this kind of thing in my school for years, and I, I, it's one of my favorite activities. Another thing we do is we have to then, this is a page for explicitly teaching the speaking that is necessary for uh, clearly understanding all the extensive listening. You need a little bit of explicitness here, and there's a chant and the question word and the answer is in the chant. How's she, how's he, how's uh, elf, where is it, and what's Kinka doing, what's Sissy doing? And they're going to chant it, and you can use gestures while you're chanting. They might need to point and chant in the beginning, but as they get comfortable, they might like to use gestures. And then there are some dots, and these dots are what I like to use for kids to get into pairs and practice asking and answering together and then color it up if they've completed saying something. So that gives them a, a, a goal purpose and it keeps them on task and it, and it gives them something active to do with their hands while they're speaking. And we might give them, oh, do three dots today or do six dots today. It, or you can do all of them, but, but little kids might need smaller blocks of the same experience, but we're gonna listen to the chant because it's fun and they can do this at home for homework too. How's she? She's happy. How's he? He's sad. How's she? She's hot. How's he? He's cold. How's she? She's angry. Using gestures is a great way to learn language. Where is it? It's up. Where is it? It's down. Where is it? It's in. Where is it? It's on. Where is it? It's under. What's Kinka doing? He's eating. What's Sissy doing? She's drinking. What's Uncle doing? He's throwing. What's Kinka doing? He's catching. What's Pinka doing? She's swimming. What's Callie doing? She's cooking. What's Allie doing? He's drawing. What's Pinka doing? She's sleeping. So all these words, if you notice, all, all this language was incorporated in the first page of the unit. I mean, we're, we're now going in deep, and you can go back and listen to that in, uh, in, in beginning language point again. But all this support, they're going to be speaking it, they're going to be hearing it, they're going to be giving their picture support.
support. They're going to have total comprehension of this language. And imagine doing this throughout an entire year. So what happens next? More phonics, because it's a phonics book, right? <laughs> and another thing we, that's really hard is middle vowel sounds. And so we, we, we go, at the top here, we've got Alliant, Ollie, Octopus, and Uncle Umpire. And we're going to be coloring based on the middle sound that we hear. And in the beginning, you're going to need to say them with, I like, in the beginning, the kids can't do this independently. Okay, I get them to get three crayons out and put it on the table. And then I say, cut, Alley, cut, Ollie, cut, Uncle. And I get them to kind of hear and guess, and they pick up a crayon and show which one they hear. And sometimes there's always an odd one that gets the wrong one, and he notices that the others have a different one. So then I repeat that, and I get them to look at my mouth and say the sounds to, and eventually they all can agree on, on the correct answer. <laughs> and then they color it. And these kinds of activities, eventually they can do this independently without help. And I mean, I don't have kids in my class, in my first year classes this year, who have issues with telling the difference between A and U, which is amazing because it's really hard for almost any student. So that's been really good, that, that kind of activity really works, even if you, you know, use it in your class in a different way, but it works really well. And then down below here, I get a lot of problems with first graders who can't tell the difference between letters. And when they're writing them, they, they have a lot of difficulty with visual discrimination and visual orientation. And it, I, I highlight uh, difficult ones that they have uh, trouble telling the difference between in this section every other unit. And uh, we first write the letters, we talk about what's different about them, we get them to orally explain in their own language what's different, we raise their attention to what's difficult, and then we have them listen to a chant where they all this language is given to them, and then they choose the correct letter and write it. And, and this is really good because they're, they're, they're figuring it out and they're thinking it through, and you've got to really emphasize uh, like D and A have a line placement. You can often get people writing an A with a halfway D looking A. And, and we're, we're working on, on showing them that the, these finer points are important. So writing is important too, and we work on that. In the next page, this is um, showing actually the way to introduce reading to kids is we have to first divorce the phone animals from the letters so that they now see the letter as a unique symbol of a sound. They need to know that that letter is a sound. So now we're, do, we're, we're, we're actually physically doing this in the book, but this is what needs to happen. And there's a chant. So they're going to hear the names of the characters again, and then they're going to draw lines to the letters and write the letters and say the sounds again. And that's when we get down to the bottom, their first kind of blending task. Notice that the pictures, all given in a chant form, so that they can hear the words first, are similar, dog and tag. Very easy to mistake. And then they're asked to sound out the word using the top guide to kind of help for support and try to figure out which one they need to circle that's correct. It's kind of a puzzle, but it's very doable, and you're there as a teacher supporting them and trying to get them to hear the difference between dad and dot, or, or the difference between uh, uh, cat and cut. So, so we're, we're, we're really getting them to kind of say, ah, th these details in the reading is actually important and, here, and the sounds are important. So we do that and then we get to the first reading fluency drill, which is in the back of every unit. And this is very simple, but first what I do is I have them take colored pencils and read the words, they're decoding the words, and they're underlining based on what, 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 what word they think it is. And I always watch for the difference between dad and tag because that's where they're going to make a mistake. Because D and T sound a lot alike, and a lot of kids have attention issues where they won't read to the end of the word. So you're watching for those people. And you know them. You know them. They're there. So you're getting them to like focus and listen. And then there's a chant. And the first part of the chant is slow and read. And then there are three more speeds, which is just the background karaoke, okay, so that you will have them reading alone. I want you to listen to this. Sad.
on because uh, the next section is another page of the unit with another story and two more songs and I want you to have that exposure I want to make sure I have time for it. So let's just listen to the story, okay? My friends are at Dilly Dog's house today. Unit two. What are they doing? Let's ask them. Hello, Cali Cat. What are you doing? I'm cooking. I'm baking a cake. Where's the cake? Here it is. It's in this cup. Oh, it's a little cake. It's so cute. Do you like cooking? Yes, I do. Dilly Dog likes cooking too, but he isn't cooking today. Hello, Dilly Dog. What are you doing? Hi, Zoe. I'm drawing dots on this door. Oh, it's a heart. That's so cute. Do you like drawing? Yes. I do. It's fun. Where's Allie Ant? He's in the yard. Tommy Tiger's in the yard, too. Let's go say hello. Hi, Allie Ant. How are you? I'm hungry. I'm eating yogurt. Do you want some yogurt, Zoe? No, thanks. I want to play with Tommy Tiger. Hello, Tommy Tiger. What are you doing? I'm catching butterflies. Look, they are all blue and yellow. Oh, they are so pretty. I like butterflies. Me too. Where's Uncle Umpire today? He's in the sub. He's sleeping. He likes sleeping. Do you like sleeping? No, I don't. I like cooking. I like eating. I like throwing. I like catching. <laughs> I like drinking. And I like drawing. But I don't like sleeping. How about you? What are you doing? What do you like? Okay, so that's our next, our next uh, story. The same vocabulary, recycled in a completely different context, and using similar language across multiple contexts is a very important element of the extensive reading uh, phenomena that we all have been reading about, and that's what we're doing here. We're applying it to kids who can't read yet. And now we're gonna do some songs, so if you're ready, I'm ready to dance. Stand up, have some fun. I love this song, by the way. The musicians came back with a really nice background. <laughs>
Here we go. Do you like cooking? Do you like eating? What do you like? Golly goat. What do you like?
revision, which is one of the number one problems for reading comprehension and new readers in this country. Okay, so we want to make sure they understand the message, the prepositions of locations. I don't know how many of your students have ever thought that uh, the album is on the cat is actually a, um, pictured a cat being on an album, for example. They, they really get it mixed up because the Japanese it is different. So we want to really work that so that when they're reading more text, they're getting an accurate abstract image of, of what it is that they're reading. And, and we're supporting that before we ask them to read it in text. And that's really important. So that's what we're doing, putting, giving support. The next page of unit two is again, uh, before we were having them color by sound and now we're having them more independent. There's a chance so they learn to speak the words. They remind, you remind the students how to speak the words that they've seen before. And then we can get them to independently choose a letter and, and do this task on their own. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you are walking around as a teacher supporting them and making sure they hear you, look at your mouth and hear you speak very clearly so that they can get the difference uh, between the middle sounds. And the bottom part of this page is something different. This is asking you to develop a, a, a continuing conversation about phonological awareness in the classroom. What they're doing in here uh, is they are saying the word and trying to write down how many sounds they hear. There is no wrong answer. But what we're trying to get teachers to do is get them to talk about it. Ted, how many words do you hear? Ted, you've got, some people write down your Ted and t. Some people write your t, e, and t. But you want them to hear t, e, n, t, right? And you're counting out the sounds in the word with the students as we're trying to have a dialogue about them. And, and this way they can, uh, they can connect with phonological awareness. If you hear the sounds in the words, then you can hear the words in a sentence and you can begin to get the grammar. Another thing, there's a puzzle uh, that changes every other unit that helps them have fun uh, recycling the language. And then here's a, another activity where they must fill in the picture with a detail based on reading. This is a reading comprehension drill. And we finally uh, have another increasing level of phonics chant. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, put this on right now, but um, basically they're reading longer and longer text with picture support, helping, helping to tell a story, and then they uh, are reading fast, reading for speed. And this go continues throughout the whole book. So anyway, um, that is pretty much two units of the book. You get the sense of the experience. If you have any questions, um, I'd be happy to answer them. Anybody? Sorry, the, um, the, the pages you just showed just before, the um, phonics, um, just what you, since I came in. So is that for um, kindergarten kids or uh, elementary? This was written for first grade elementary school okay. students. Yeah. I think that you could use it for uh, the Nencho level six year olds, but um, it, uh, I specifically had first graders in mind and, and developmentally where they are. Um, yeah, there's no like um, no tracing, not much tracing. So I thought it's the fourth in a series of phonics books. Yeah, uh, it's actually the fifth in a series of phonics books. We go from starter, and this is book four. Yeah, level three teaches a lot of writing uh, of three-letter words, but um, uh, I wanted to make sure that if students had not used those series, that they would, that even students who had never studied English before, that they would be able to join a group that had had that experience and, and be given the support they need to eventually Catch up. fill in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's that's my point. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. On the page before, you talked about mm -hmm. the um, extensive. Uh, phonological awareness in the little box. Do you want them? What, what is it? You write the sound or write how many sounds? The number. Oh, a number. Okay. A number. Okay. But you can do it as a group, mm -hmm. and which which I prefer to do because it's it's I think it's it's something that encourages. It reminds the teacher that this is an important conversation. And could the vowel would the vowel blend for like goat? Um, Be one like sound. Good, like good o to. Yeah. Why not? Good. Okay. It, 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 and it, I say no answer is wrong, right, but right. their answer will basically show you where their level of phonological awareness is. Right, right. Yeah, and, and, and that'll give you feedback as well. So um, yeah, definitely. And you can do that with sentences too. Right. Uh, I use, a lot of kids, you know, I'll say, Tony is going to the bookstore. 
How many words do you hear? Well, some kids think they can do that. They'll say, Tony is going to the bookstore. Fine, but others might say, Tony is going to bookstore. And, or they, they won't hear all the little words. And that's phonological awareness weakness. And that impedes their ability to learn grammar. And we want to get that fixed so that they can hear all the words and everything you're saying in your classroom and actually pick up the patterns. Yeah. If they don't hear all of them, they're just getting a wall of sound and they're not getting the details from it. Like filling in the holes of Swiss cheese. Exactly. That's well, that's very good. I'll yeah. remember that. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying to my, my own children. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Anybody else have a question? Sorry, you you don't insist, but you basically you, you have them talk first uh, before they read and write. So that sentence you're talking about, like he is going to the supermarket. So you make sure that they got it down orally first. Oh yeah. Is that what you do? Oh yeah. Definitely. And if I hear a kid who's not using all the words when they're speaking a sentence, I absolutely come back and count it out with them and okay. get them to raise their awareness of the details of the sentence. Yeah, yeah. And writing is also a way of raising their awareness too, but I want to work on that before I ask them to write because there's a lot of other uh, con skills that require concentration when you're getting them to write and they make mistakes that they wouldn't do orally mm -hmm. too. And, and that's because they're focusing on writing, which is a whole different uh, okay. another set of skills. Would yeah. you recommend reading before writing? Um, or it doesn't matter? Well, that's an interesting question. I do think that, that, that reading words before writing is important. Yeah, I mean, like we, we said for this book, we're saying the sound of the letter before we're writing it. Mm -hmm. And we will decode a word and read it and say it, be able to speak it before writing it. Because speak, writing should be an extension of what you're speaking. Okay. And the whole, that's the synthetic phonics okay. uh, approach, yeah. Anyone else? Yes. How much does it cost and where can I buy it? <laughs> well, I, I know you're supposed to get it at ET, Simon, ETJ yeah. Books, ETJ Bookstore, but um, I have no idea what it costs. Oh, it's cheap. How much? Uh, well, 1850 I think we get a 20% discount off at ETJ Books, I believe. Is that right? And it comes with a CD. In the back of the book. Yeah, 74 tracks. You don't have to buy the class CD separately. And that's that's so that they can use it at home for homework and a lot of parent practice as well, because I think that input's important. Everybody should have one of these. This is an inspection copy form. If you fill one of these in, I can give you an inspection copy, unfortunately not of Phonics Book 4, which won't be in stock until the end of the month, but you can order it now. But you can have uh, an inspection copy of Happy Valley Unit. Three. Three. Book three. Book three. Thank you. Book three. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the inevitable, the uncomfortable, the indomitable Cynthia Ashdow. <laughs> Cynthia Catherine, the author of the course series, and I will be at the table all day. So if you have any questions about this book, the phonics series, or the course series, please come and see us at the table. And I'm presenting at 3.30 on Happy Valley, so please come. And 3.30, Catherine's doing a presentation uh, room six. on the core series. So please yes, give me your forms, and I'll give you a free book. Simon, where did you get that from? Just for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I have. And I'll be around the tables. Anybody has any questions that they're a little shy to talk about here? So.